Good morning, Mr. Leonel Senzu. Um, welcome to Tigali, Rwanda. I'm good to see you again. Um, straight to the question. Since this summit is about agricultural funds and, um, and um, the continent of Africa, how would you describe the current state of agriculture on the continent? Uh, agriculture has always been uh, the number one contributor to labor, the, 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 the labor market in our continent. Uh, it depends on, on countries, but uh, the average for sub-Saharan Africa is probably 50% of uh, the active pressure in the workforce. Course. So socially, in terms of incomes, and in terms of poverty, because it's a, a more vulnerable part of the labor force, uh, it is absolutely essential. And in the current situation, where we have had pandemics, that a shock which is even stronger than the pandemics, which is inflation, imported inflation, on many, many inputs. Uh, it, it, it's a very, very, it's, it's very, critic, very critical situation for a large, large part of the population in Africa. This cannot be compared to any other continent. Uh, Why so? If you take the OECD countries, typically uh, the contribution to the labor market in agriculture is sort of 3%. Here you speak the majority of the population in many, many countries. Uh, something which is also an issue is that it is not the least contributor to the GDP. Typically, uh, it is a contribution average in sub-Saharan Africa, around 25%, which means that there is an under employment under productivity uh, of this sector. Because in effect, many people will describe Africa as an agricultural economy. But it's not the case. It's a tertiary economy. Uh, service, transport, trade are far more important in terms of contribution to the GDP. And even in the primary sector, mining, hydrocarbon are more important in terms of contribution to the GDP. So socially, then politically, agriculture is absolutely central. But in economic terms, it is not at the proper level of recognition. But in the current circumstances, and in a city like this one, and throughout uh, everything that Agra, uh, this major foundation, African foundation, the, the, the work done uh, on the ground, we progress in recognition that we absolutely have to bridge the gap of productivity and we have absolutely to address modernization, mechanization, better uh, work on the soil, on fertilizers. We are by far in a situation of record of low use of input, uh, proper seeds or fertilizers or uh, water for irrigation. So we have a huge work of adaptation, but we have to do this work of adaptation in, in times where you have all those shocks. But why is it a moment where the ration of agricultural contribution is essential. It's because if we have to import our food, and we are net importers of the food, we then have a major on all the population, the urban population essentially, uh, inflation. Uh, when we say inflation in Africa in 2022 will be high, probably 10%, uh, sort of low double digit. But for food inflation, it will be far more. Today, you have estimates that in Ethiopia, for instance, you have a 30% inflation of uh, food because of the imported food, which is uh, reflecting the, the market, the, the market price.
but which reflects as well uh, the devaluation of our currencies, because the dollar uh, has been stronger and stronger during the year against all key currencies. It's true of beer in Ethiopia or shilling uh, in Kenya or Tanzania, but it's also true of more uh, robust currencies like the Hong. And it's also true of the Euro. And you have many countries very much uh, linked and pegged with Euros. It's only uh, West Africa and Francophone Africa or Central Africa. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's Maghreb where you have strong links, especially uh, in, in Morocco. Uh, it is Comoros and so on. So you have all, all countries in effect hit by the currency inflation added to the substantial inflation of the market. And, and, and because of that, even the domestic production follows, because substitute to Ukrainian uh, uh, edible oil or, or, or wheat or whatever. And ac accordingly, you have a big inflation as well. Add up to, uh, to that, the fact that the cost of logistics are also increasing. So the shock is an immense shock because it's not just on the market, the commodity market, you have the series multiplied by two in one year. It is the cost of the raw material or the, or the imported product or the local products, but it's the cost of transport, it's energy, it's the cost of in, in, implied by, uh, by currency devaluation. So the recognition that in normal, normal circumstances, we have an adaptation effort to make because we are in under uh, productivity. But in those circumstances, we have a major social effort, which means a major budgetary uh, effort. Uh, because we, a situation which is not normal in normal circumstances becomes very, very critical when you, you are uh, in a show. And this is everywhere, in every room of this convention center, in every mine. Uh, it, it, it is one of the most difficult moments. But as any crisis, uh, you discover that you have potentials, you have uh, innovations and technologies available. In effect, we know what we have to do to improve productivity and be uh, shock uh, proof and be uh, immune, except that you, you have mentioned financing, and finance is an important part uh, in, in this conference. We absolutely need to organize blended finance uh, for agriculture, and we have across the continent a few experiences which are described here uh, in this summit. And it's not only microfinance, it can be blended finance, it can be uh, serious infrastructure, project finance, and so on. But what is the truth? My, f my, my most significant surprise when I became Prime Minister was agriculture is 27% of the GDP. Agriculture is 50% of the, the active population. Employed. It is 2% of allocation of financing in terms of credit. All categories of credit, from microfinance to uh, big finance uh, uh, channeled by uh, the banks, channeled by uh, the, the uh, fashion development institutions. Uh, Two percent to serve 27% of GDP and 50% of the population. This is not progressing dramatically, except with something that is a debate in this summit and was not really present in the previous year, which is that forestry uh, combined with agriculture will become a very serious potential uh, strength uh, of Africa. And that is starting to mobilize uh, resources. Why? Because of the needs in the rich world, the advanced countries, 
of producing car certificates, compensating in the context of climate change. Yeah. Africa is, in a sense, the first and foremost solution. This could benefit uh, in terms of uh, uh, driving uh, financial revolution for, for, for Africa. But we are at, a, at the, the birth of uh, 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 awareness of that. For the time being, we are in a situation which will explain for years to come that we do not progress significantly in terms of poverty reduction, in terms of uh, food safety, because you cannot, you absolutely cannot uh, manage such an imbalance. You cannot in a country where Africa, in my typic, typical Benin, where it is our export number one resource, more than one fourth of our GDP and two percent of our finance. And for the time being, we have not that good hopes. But we have this one related to climate change, need of carbon certificates, uh, and there Africa could well organize uh, with the proper regulations. Uh, grow the resources, uh, find resources. The, the world needs Africa. It was a case a few years ago. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, so to, to the final question, um, is about Ukraine, Russia, Africa, food. How is it possible that Ukraine, which is currently defending herself against Russia's um, war and Russia's aggression is still able to send ships of grain to the all on Africa. Several African countries are depending on a country still in conflict today. How is that? Um, how, is, how, is that um, how does that make sense? Uh, first, I, I, I think uh, it's, it's a good news to see that part of the exports of uh, Ukraine okay. and part of the export of uh, Russia no. uh, are able to come on the, on the world market. It is a diplomatic effort by many parties, but we will have uh, part of the supply. Uh, because it's not only that the Ukrainian uh, crops were blocked, it's also that the sanctions against Russia mean that you have restrict flows of export by Russia. And it's not a cereal, very important uh, for, for Africa, cereals, for several countries, Egypt, for instance, Maghreb, for instance. Uh, but it's also edible oil and uh, a, lot, a, a lot of, uh, of markets. But the cereals and the fat are obviously essential for human supply of food and animal feed. So, yes, uh, it is a shock which is a bit mitigated by the fact that part of those crops will reach uh, the market. That's why you have seen the prices going down in the recent weeks. Uh, because it was unexpected to be able to access to part of, uh, of, of the uh, supply. Sure. But unfortunately, the effect in Africa is far broader than the physical uh, supply. You, you, you have inflation everywhere, and for instance, uh, on hydrocarbons, we have to have in, in mind that agriculture in Africa for domestic production is dependent also of the, the cost of, uh, of it. And, 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 and the cold chain, for instance, uh, and, and, and it, it's essential to have a, a cheap energy. Or the, the Ukrainian-Russian uh, war makes a major supply very, very uh, sort of an affordable, an, an affordable. And take gas, for instance, carbons. It's the number one uh, cost 
of manufactured fertilizers, and you will have an impact because cost of gas, which has started before the war but has been aggravated by the war, has been uh, going up and up in price because of the recovery and overheat of the world economy in 2021, but it has been aggravated because obviously uh, Russia uh, is an essential exporter uh, of gas. So it has an immediate immediate impact because you could say in Africa, okay, we will receive less cereals from Russia and, and, and Ukraine, but we will substitute by an effort production of our own cereals. We do not uh, produce much of wheat, a bit, but not much, and not enough. A lot of maize, uh, a lot of uh, other secondary uh, local domestic uh, cereals. Except for that, we get that you could well have a decrease of the domestic production. It's not in a position to be a substitute at all because of the cost supplied by more than three uh, in uh, the, 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 the supply chain to, to manufacture the fertilizers in the, uh, the fertilizers in Africa. So you see, you, you have complex effects. You have a direct effect, uh, shortage, meaning inflation, import, and restricted quantities. But you have a secondary effect. You, can, you cannot mitigate because you have other factors. I, I, I've, I've uh, quoted uh, uh, energy, but it could also be logistics, uh, which mean it's very, very difficult in one year uh, to mitigate the shortage by a, a, a growth of our production. Uh, add to that the climate change having created drought mm -hmm. in uh, the Horn of Africa and in the north of Africa, where you have also in Morocco, in Maghreb, you have also uh, difficult circumstances. So we are in a difficult situation, but it's not only the, the, the first effect, it's also the counter effects, the sun effect, uh, the price effects of things totally uh, different from than, 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 than uh, agriculture, but uh, mm -hmm. energy or services, logistics, and so on. Mm -hmm. Having said that, you have something which is never mentioned, but which is important. Some countries are net benefits of the inflation, because if you are in a position to export uh, raw materials going uh, up terms of, of pricing, you are clearly in a position to, to, to a financial position which is a bit better. So if you are yourselves a uh, hydrocarbon exporter, you can clearly create some budgetary space, subsidize inflationary imports. Take Central Africa, you have in Congo, RC, Gabon, and so on. Uh, simultaneously, uh, all the, the minerals, the oil, and the wood. And the wood went up in terms of inflation, even more than hydrocarbons. So some of those countries have of debt, for instance, uh, have even uh, uh, the situation of very difficult public uh, budget resources. Uh, some countries have a net excess of budgetary resources because of the way they, they, their exports are composed. So some countries are net beneficiaries. Clearly, Central Africa is in this, uh, this position. Algeria can cope with the fact that they are dependent uh, on, on, on importing uh, dairy products and, uh, and, and cereals massively. But con conversely, they are one of the key solutions for Europe in terms of gas. And oh, Nigeria, Nigeria. Algeria, 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 Algeria. Algeria. Now it's more complex in, in, yes. in Nigeria because in Nigeria uh, agriculture is now more important in the GDP than, uh, than hydrocarbons. Yes. And, uh, but it's, so, so it's very trusted. Some countries 
that they are not the majority are in a better situation in this context. The ones exporting raw materials which have been, uh, in terms of, uh, of price, uh, going significantly up in the exports and fiscal uh, uh, inflows, uh, the, 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 the tax uh, revenues. Unfortunately, it's probably 15, 20 countries in, in Africa, uh, so it's, it, it's not the majority. But it, it has to be underlined because it changes the situation of Chad, Congo, of RDC, uh, and mitigates the difficulties. Interesting. One final question, if you could, um, if you could mix, if you could summarize it. With all what you've said, with the current situation on the continent, agriculture-wise and all whatnot, what do you think is the way forward? How can we, I won't say look forward, how can the continent extricate itself from the present predicament? You have always uh, major changes after such an important uh, crisis. So for me, it's very clear that we have no hesitation. We, 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 it's, what we have to do is so clear. Uh, we have to finance agriculture better, and we know that it is profitable. It is not because it was not profitable that we have located resources. It's because the, the, the financial tools didn't, because it's, uh, the, 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 the banking system, the microfinance system was not, it had not been conceived for investment and working capital of, of, of agriculture. It has been conceived decades ago uh, for the trade, internal trade, uh, short-term credit. So we, we, we have the tools. Uh, we have, we have to implement, but it's so clear that the benefits and uh, uh, how much it is uh, something uh, urgent. Uh, and we have the tools. So for, for me, you will have a green financial revolution. The forestry and all forestry will be an important part of that with a driver which, which is not the situation in the continent that much, but the needs of the uh, advanced uh, economies. It will have important positive uh, consequences on reduction uh, of poverty. But it, uh, conventions like those ones mm -hmm. where you have the bankers, you have the fertilizers manufacturers, you well, have the farmers. Uh, the farmers and the small the chain. because I was one of the only uh, uh, strong institution defending the small farmers who are the vast, vast majority on our continent. So conventions of that sort are very important if you want to make a coalition for that to, 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 to be enacted and to, to be uh, effective on the ground. But if something is clear is that we, we do not ignore what are the solutions? And we have the technological solution. We have not yet the equity, the capital, uh, the credit, and it's what we discuss uh, nowadays. And I think that uh, we will start with a shock, a social shock, then political shocks. That is what we live uh, currently in 22, it will be the same in 23. Going forward and beyond that, I think it will have enlightened the solutions. And the solutions not only for the continent and its, its poverty, its poverty, but a bit for the world. Because uh, if we uh, improve the, the growth of agriculture, and if we improve dramatically the reforestation, it will have important uh, consequences on the world climate change as a whole. Uh, and I think that this solution uh, to the world problems through Africa is something completely new. I mean, Africa is not a burden for the world. It is a solution because it is a, a carbon uh, pit. And this will be also uh, very, uh, more important every, uh, every year. But this is for another question, which is COP27 in, in Africa. Thank you very much.